good morning to all of you and welcome to our Mass this morning as we worship God in spirit and uh, in truth. We welcome all of those who are with us online and we also welcome some of the members of the Friends of Guiding in Barbados. Opening him, him 211, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, him 211. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen. 
Almighty God, all desires known, cleanse. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, mercifully receive the praise of your people who call upon you and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please sit for the ministry of the word. The first lesson is taken from Ephesians chapter 1, 2 Samuel 6, verses 1 to 5, and 12b to 19. David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out and went from Baal, Judea, to bring, upon, to bring up from them there the ark of God which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadad, which was on the hill. Uzzah, 
and Ahio, the son of Abinadad, were driving the new cart with the ark of God. And Ahio went in front of the ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with song and lyres and harps and tamarines and chastenay and cymbals. The Lord has blessed the household of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the song of the trumpet. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. When David had finished the offering, the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food from among all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their homes. This is the word of the Lord. The appointed psalm for the service is Psalm 24. Psalm 24.
The epistle is taken from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him things in heaven, and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. For the gradual hymn 412, faith of our fathers living still in spite of dungeon, fire, and sword. Hymn 412.
The Lord be with you. The reading of the Holy Gospel according to Mark chapter 6, beginning at the 14th verse. Glory to Christ, our Savior. King Herod heard of the deeds of power, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason, these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the baptizer. Immediately, she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved. Yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When the disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the Gospel of Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Please sit. Today's gospel recalls the death of John the Baptist, who opposed the marriage of 
King Herod to his sister-in-law, Herodias. John opposed the marriage because it went against Jewish law and tradition. You cannot marry your brother's wife once he's alive. You cannot marry your brother's wife once he's alive. If he dies, yes, you, you marry him. Actually, in the Jewish law, if you were married to a man and he died, but then the next brother was able to marry you and go on and go on forever or so. Remember the story they asked Christ, who's your wife? Will she be at the resurrection? But this story gets a little messier because Herodias was the niece of her husband and King Herod, she was their niece. So it, it becomes very messy in that stage. Now, it is said that King Herod and Herodias had a relationship when her husband, Philip, went to Rome on a visit. You know, they say it's not good to separate from your husband or your wife at times. You never know what will happen. <laughs> not in this case. And, uh, and Herodias agreed, she agreed to leave her husband and to marry King Herod, who had divorced his wife. But John opposed it. But Herodias did not take kindly to John's opposition to the marriage, and she influenced the king, and he imprisoned John. But he did not kill John because the gospel says he believed John to be a righteous man. And he also liked to listen to what John preached. So you get the background. This woman is opposed to John. Why? Because John said to the king, you should not marry who? Your brother's wife. Once he's alive. And then in those days, uh, there are these parties, and it was a practice to invite people to come and perform at the, at the party. And so at this party, Salome, Herodias' daughter, she came and she danced, and it pleased the king so much, he said, look, ah, oh, I like the way you dance. And look, because of the way you dance and you please me, ask me for whatever you want and I will give you what? Even half of my kingdom. And she goes to Herodias, ah, what should I ask for? Ah, no. Herodias got an opportunity to seek revenge and to get back at John. Tell the king to do what? Give me John the Baptist's head on a platter. And she goes back to the king. Give me John the Baptist here on the platter. Uh, the king is caught. God, he made that promise. Whatever you ask for, I will give. And so, so, so say, so then, John was beheaded. And uh, what happened? He gave to Herodias the head of John the Baptist on the platter. Now, there are two elements of this that I want to speak about this morning, but just to remind you, all of us, be careful of the promises you made. 
be careful of the promises you made. Unless you are sure about the outcome or have a clear idea what will happen, be careful of the promises you made. It may come back to what? To haunt you. And it does, you know. It does come back some things to haunt you. But in today's gospel, I think one of the lessons we learn is that there's a cost to pay for speaking the truth. There's a cost to pay for speaking the truth. There's a cost to discipleship. And so through all Jesus says to people, before you become a disciple, sit down and count the cost. There's a cost for, to pay for speaking the truth. Now, however one understands the relationship between John the Baptist and Jesus the Christ, one thing is sure. The people of God who challenge those in power usually suffer significant consequences. The people of God who challenge the powers that be usually suffer significant consequences. John speaks the truth boldly and without fear of the consequences. He's fearless. You cannot what? You cannot marry your brother's wife. And in this case, speaking out against a powerful, powerful man like Herod was to invite death. He telling the king, you can't do what you want to do. And so John is fearless. What? You cannot, what? Marry your brother's wife. But John was not afraid. I think John gives us an example that we should have the courage to say what we believe to be the truth without fear of the consequences that we follow, especially if we are convinced that the truth is what God wants. And it goes to say that we should not cover up the truth or shy away from speaking the truth for our comfort or to avoid some difficult consequences. And as we all know, it takes courage and strength to speak the truth and to do what is right. And as we all know, people who speak the truth are not usually late, not usually late. So the first thing we learn from today's gospel is that we are called to be people of truth, no matter what we might suffer because of our witness to and for the truth. 
But the gospel for today also informs the people of God what can happen when we call out the powers that be, when we perceive that their actions and policies are not in keeping with what we consider to be right, just, and in the interest of the common good. Do you know in some places to criticize a government or to criticize a leader about policies can result in victimization. In some places, people are killed for criticizing the, the leaders. And in many countries up to this day, people are in prison for voicing their views about policies of governments. So there's a cause for Christians when we critique the policies of a government or a leader. Thank God, this is not the way that governments function in Barbados. Governments in Barbados do not function in this manner. We are free in this land to voice our opinions, and this we must always do without the fear of the consequences that might come because of our courage to say no. I don't think what you're doing is right. Like John the Baptist, we might have that courage. And so the gospel reminds us that we are called to what? Be people of truth. And that we are also, we also have a responsibility as Christians to critique what our leaders do so that we can promote the good of the community. And so, I think the gospel should be seen as a challenge to all people to speak the truth, do what is right, and not to compromise one's principles and values. And throughout the Bible, we are called, we are exhorted to be truthful in all circumstances of life. But at the same time, as the Bible calls us to be truthful in every aspect of life, it reminds us of the suffering that may come because of our faithfulness to the truth. And so we can say, always speak the truth. But truth is more than knowledge. Truth is not always about being right or wrong. Truth is not always in black or white. And so sometimes, in order to, let me make a difference down. We are talking a difference between true and truthful. A difference between true and truthful. And so in order to be truthful to every situation in life, which means to do what is right, sometimes we have to look at the situation in a very comprehensive manner, and then ask yourself, what is the right thing to do in this situation? Are you with me? What is the right thing to do in this situation so that I can be truthful in all that I do? Are you with me? Also. Now, 
But the Bible says we have to speak the truth in love. Speak the truth in love. Now, what does it mean to speak the truth in love? Let us go back. The gospel asks us to be true, truthful in all aspects of life, to speak the truth and to live by the truth. But what does it mean to speak the truth in love? Love builds relationships. Love promotes compassion, kindness, tolerance, and the like. Now, if speaking the truth does not build relationships, promote growth, and transformation of lives, it does not serve any useful purpose. So speaking the truth in love means that our witness and action should promote and build and transform lives and situations. When we speak the truth without love, it is condescending. It can be dehumanizing, painful, embarrassing, callous, and condemning. Speaking the truth without love does not build up what it does, it tears down. But when we speak the truth in love, we are compassionate, we are honest, we are kind, we are understanding, we are tolerant, forgiving, and we are merciful. Blessed are the merciful. So the question which we need to ask this morning, within the context, what is the motive for speaking the truth? What is the motive for speaking the truth? Do you speak the truth to cause people pain and distress? Do you speak the truth to promote yourself? Do you speak the truth to cause embarrassment to people? Do you speak the truth to destroy someone and not to build up the person? And then the question which you need to ask is this. Why should I always speak the truth? Why? Should I always speak the truth? You know, it is possible to be right and what and yet wrong. Possible to be right and yet wrong. Sometimes speaking the truth might not be the right thing to do in all circumstances. In some circumstances, it may not be right to speak the truth if it is not going to promote peace and goodwill. Let me ask you a question. Can you think of a situation when speaking the truth may do more damage than good? Can you? Can you think of a situation where speaking the truth may do more damage than good? So there must be a balance. There must be a balance. And at times, we might need to 
exercise restraint Now, this is a dangerous road I'm going down. <laughs> but there are times when speaking the truth might not be the most loving thing to do. Agree or disagree? Let me ask you a question. I guess you will say that we should always speak the truth. Is that what you say? Huh? Can I hear you? Right. All right. Is speaking the truth at all times because your son or daughter to go to prison for the first offense, what will you do? What will you do? Huh? What will you do? Is speaking the truth will cause intentional pain and discomfort. Should you do it? Should you? In speaking the truth, do you take people's feelings into consideration? Or do you speak the truth no matter the outcome? Are you responsible? I want to suggest this morning in this address and in the gospel for today. You ready? I want to suggest to be truthful, we must always do what is the most loving thing in every situation. To be truthful means we must always do what is the, what the most loving thing in every situation. In the name of God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We acknowledge. Let us need now for the intercession form F, form F on page 115. Let us pray for the church and for all people according to their needs. Lord, in your love, bless and inspire all members of the clergy, especially Howard, our Archbishop, Michael, our Bishop, and Wayne, our priest. Their lives may be examples of their teachings and that they may rightly and faithfully administer our holy sacraments. Guide and protect all head of state and all who bear rule, especially those in this land. Dame Sandra, our president, 
Mia, our Prime Minister, and all members of Parliament and all persons serving in local government. Direct those who administer justice and strengthen those who guard and protect the land. Reveal the common good to those in positions of public trust and to decision makers in industry and commerce. Enlighten with your spirit all places of education and learning. Comfort and help all persons who are in any trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those people in our island. Remember our brothers and sisters, especially those in the areas where our hurricane barrel passed through and all others who have died in your fear and fear. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the witness of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, for the holy patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have been good examples in their several generations. And finally, let us pray for our own needs. Remember all those who need our prayers at this time, all those who have asked us to pray for them. Accept our prayers and intercessions, Father, according to your wisdom, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we have our prepared ourselves for the confession of our sins. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not there. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us pause for a few moments of silence as we reflect on the past week. Let us now confess our sins. Almighty God, we have sinned against you and one another. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. Forgive us all that is past. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen in all goodness. Keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand. The kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Please sit. This morning, as you know, we're going to take up two collections. One for the Diocese of the Ringwood Islands to help them rebuild their churches in Union and Canada One and St. Vincent. So before I give the notices, we are going to collect the collection for the, the river. We remain sitting, and the ushers will come to you, and we shall collect this collection now for the Diocese of the Ringwood Islands. The notice is for today. We extend a warm welcome to our visitors. And we say a special welcome to the members of the Friends of Guiding in Barbados who are with us this morning sitting in front. A very special welcome to you, to our mass this morning. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. My name is Wilma Turton, and I am the immediate past chairman of the Friends of Guiding. At this point, I want to extend an apology on behalf of the current 
Chairman. Due to unforeseen circumstances, she's unable to be with us this morning, but she sends her greetings and blessings for good luck in all your endeavors. I was sitting in the pew there listening to the priest and a thought came to me. As I was growing up, I used to hear the older folks speak of burdens and troubles every Sunday and challenges as you prepare for our church. Can you remember any of that? Well, the devil was meddling in our affairs since yesterday, but that is another story. A little bit about Friends of Guiding. We are not girl guides. We are a support group for the Girl Guides Association, and we have the Chief Commissioner gracing us with her presence this morning as well. Um, I also want us to sh thank you for your warm welcome, and I felt the warmth even before your priest welcomed us. As I came to the door, your usher was so gracious, and again, the devil was meddling because he made me late, and I, I wasn't sure where to park, so that took up some more time. And as I came to the door, she smiled, and I felt the warmth. Thank you very much. Um, Friends of Guiding is a support group for Girl Guides Association, and we assist them in ensuring that they, they can carry out their projects and programs. Our main focus is to do some fundraising and donate the funds to them so they can have appropriate um, funding for their projects and programs. On that note, as you would see, as you look at those of us who are present, most of us have silver in the hair. And uh, we are getting slower. The energy is going and we need some additional members, some new members with new ideas and new energies. Mark you, Friends of Guiding, embrace both male and female. And you do not have to have a guiding background. You only need to share the views of the associations in terms of your attitudes as a Christian. You do not have to be a Christian, but you have to live in truth. And you have to try to be a good citizen. By that, you obey the laws, the rules and regulations of the land, and live as good a human being as possible. So I repeat, we need your membership. We need some of you. Please offer to join us. I am pretty certain there are a number of persons sitting in the pews who would have had the influence of girl guiding in their lives from brown knees all the way through to leaders. Are there any of you who were ever members of the association? And let me remind you, once a girl guide, again? How do you know that? Once a boy scout? All right. Boy scouts are the, the brothers to girl guides. So let me see the hands of the persons in the, in the congregation who were at any time a member of girl guides. So, oh, we have some at the back. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. And you remember as I speak, all those activities that took you out into the wide open outdoors and the enjoyment you had. We are trying to ensure that we nurture the current generation that they too enjoy the benefits of the programs offered by Girl, Guide, Girl Guides. So at the end of the service, I would be most delighted if some of you would consider sharing with us your contact information and one of the members will contact you and let you know when next we have a meeting. Thank you so much. We extend greetings to people who have birthdays in the parish today. We have Ms. Zelma Daisley, 
Actually, today is Zemo's birthday. <clears throat> also, we have Carol Morn. Where's Carol? Right. Star Carol, so we see who's Carol, right? And she has some of her sisters and relatives with her at Mars this morning. So a special welcome to the members of your family. Also, Harriet Gill. And, uh, and Monica Haynes. Monica is overseas. Is there anybody at Mass with a birthday whose name is not in the parish letter? No. And we want to say thank you to Zelma and, Mon and Carol, who are the sponsors of today's parish letter. Happy birthday. The Bible Summer School will begin on the 22nd of July. The Bible Summer School will begin on the 22nd of July, which is Monday of next week, and it is open to those in the age group 5 to 14. The age group 5 to 14, the Bible Summer School. So we invite you to send the young ones on the 22nd of July and it lasts for two weeks, two weeks. The fellowship day will take place on the 25th of August. The fellowship day, the 25th of August, and we go to Farley Hill. I think we're going to print about 100 adult tickets. That is about two buses also. We're going to print about 100 tickets. There's about three buses, adults. No, for the children, we're only printing tickets for those who are in the servers and the, and the Sunday school. And that would be about 15 to 20 tickets that we will give up free. Last year, we had about 40 children. I haven't seen some of them since the day of the excursion. So this year we're doing it differently. We are only going to give out tickets to the servers and the, five, and the, the few others that come to Sunday school. Is that so, Brenda? Right. So you don't go invite Tom, Dick, and the Harry children to come. All right. If they want to come, they have to pay for it this year. Next Sunday, there's no mass here, but we are all invited to come to the gymnasium at 10 o'clock for the Mass. So no Mass here next Sunday, but everybody is invited to come. And uh, I did say last week, if you will late transportation to speak to Brenda, how many names we have so far? Morning, everyone. Um, we have eight people have indicated they need transportation. Um, Oriel and myself, we have been, tra I have gotten transportation, but the transport will come to the church and bring you back to the church. But I need to know by Thursday the latest. Those of you who don't know my number, it is 424-9028 or call Robert or Yvette. I will get the message. And I must know how many are coming. The gentleman said he will charge us, he will charge you $5 from here to the gymnasium and $5 back, which is very reasonable compared to what Aurel was being charged. So, but I must know, right? So I must know by Thursday, please call me, leave a message or call Robert or Yvette, and I will get the message. But we need to know, because I need to tell the gentleman 
how many people you will be picking up from here. All right? Good, thanks. Right, so by Thursday, let Brenda know if you will like transport transportation. And uh, just to remind you of the crop over Sunday, August the August the 4th is our crop over Sunday. And as I said before, we ask you to dress in some kind of costume. You can dress like a Ken Carter, a Morby woman, the not vendor, land shape. Um, just wear a, a costume to church that morning. Or if you do have a costume, wear something that is very pretty and colorful. But I prefer you to wear a costume that morning, you know. So dress in something that um, be, be nice to see Shelly like a, a nut vendor. You know, Jerry like a cane cutter also. I'm not going to tell you how I'm going to dress, but I'm going to wear a costume that morning, but I'm not going to tell you what I am going to um, wear. I'll just have like Mother Sally, you know, um, can also be very odd on. And... Uh, we are hoping that after the mass is over, just to do a little something around this afternoon and come back also. So I, I got to remind you about it every Sunday for the Sunday in um, August. And the visitors, you can come to the mass that morning and wear some kind of um, costume or so. I think that is all the notices for today. Mass on Wednesday morning at uh, 7. Last Sunday, last Sunday, the, the, the persons who organized our Appreciation Day on April the 28th, <laughs> where we honor some persons from the community, we gave out tokens of appreciation to them. But Zema Desley, who coordinated the program, she was not at Mass last Sunday, so she didn't get a gift. So I got to ask Zema to come down and to receive the gift from me, from Rena Isaacs to Zema. Is that so, um, Paulette? Our offertory hymn this morning is hymn 407, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you, hymn 407.
Father, we offer you these gifts which you have given us, this brain, this wine, this money. As if bread and wine have become the body and blood of Christ, so may we, so may we of all who to take the conscience of your life to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to do life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and our angels. And with all the company of heaven who forever sing this same to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Holy and gracious Father, all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom you sent to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. We therefore bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who offered himself in obedience to your will, the perfect sacrifice for all mankind. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this whenever you drink it for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. As our Father, calling to mind the death of your Son in Jewel for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension is continued intercession for us in heaven. And looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and life giving sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and grant that we who eat and drink these holy gifts may be filled with your Holy Spirit and become one body in Christ and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. May he make us a perpetual offering to you and enable us in communion with Blessed Mary, St. Cyprian, St. Silas, and St. Sridhan, and the whole company of heaven to share in the inheritance of your saints. With him and in him and uh, through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, Blessing and honor and glory. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray, our Father, Father in Amen. heaven. Our Lord, Amen. 
save us. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Many are many. We are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God. The guest of God for the people of God.
Our first communion hymn, hymn 495, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Hymn 495. Hymn 499, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, Forgive Our Foolish Ways. Hymn 499.
Those persons wishing to be blessed, please come forward now. Children, birthdays, special occasions. The Lord be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, your homes, and your loved ones this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Recessional hymn. 
hymn 469. He leadeth me, O blessed thought, O words with heavenly comfort fraught. Hymn 469.
our collection for the Diocese of the Windward Islands came to $3,045. $3,045. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord.